Welcome. This is the Lifetime Cash Flow through Real Estate Investing Podcast. This is where you'll learn strategies to help you achieve lifetime financial freedom through real estate investment. Your host, Rod Cleef, has owned over 2,000 homes and apartments. And he brings experts in all aspects of real estate investment and management onto the show. Now, here's your host, Rod Cleef. Welcome to another edition of How to Build Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing. I'm Rod Cleef, and I am thrilled you're here. Before we get to our awesome guest today, I want to mention a couple of very quick things. And number one is, I love interacting with you guys on social media. Please connect with me. If you're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and I guess my team is even putting me on Pinterest soon. So connect with me on those, because I really love to hear from you guys. I also love to hear your stories. If you've purchased a multifamily property or taken action on multifamily based on some of what you've heard on my show, I'd really love to hear from you, which is actually why we're interviewing the guest we have today, because he reached out after he bought his second property and said that I played a role in that. I just That's just such a gift to me, so I'd be very, very grateful uh, if you give me that gift, if you, if you take down a property and I played any role in it at all in getting you to take action with your psychology or just maybe some of the mechanical stuff that I, we talk about on the show, give me that gift. And just pop me an email, rod at rodcleef.com, R-O-D at R-O-D-K-H-L-E-I f as in frank.com and let me know about about what you bought i know i've talked about my book ad nauseum but i i'm gonna i'm gonna put it on amazon here soon i've, I've delayed because so I mean, i've literally had thousands of people ask for a copy so i'm just gonna give it away for free for a little longer if you haven't gotten a free copy make sure you do i mean it i've gotten rave reviews on it and it's it's helping people buy properties get it uh, by texting rod rod to 41411 and we'll give you a free copy my guest today is aj asaro and aj AJ uh, lives in Chicago, moved there from Orange County. I know you guys have heard me interview people with hundreds of units on this show, thousands of units, tens of thousands of units. And, and now I'm, I'm kind of, I've decided to interview a few people with just a handful of units and AJ has seven. I, I feel like maybe someone like AJ can relate to more of you that haven't taken action yet, particularly in how he bought them and, and was able to, to make it happen in the way that we'll get into in just a minute. So AJ, thanks for being on the show, buddy. Thanks, Rod. Thrilled to be here and thanks for all you do. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I stole a little of your thunder. You moved from LA to Chicago. Um, and I also forgot to mention AJ works for Jackson Jackson National Asset Management, huge asset management uh, organization. I'll let AJ speak to how being at that job has impacted uh, his decision to get into multifamily. So, with that, why don't you tell us? Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. So I got I got interested in real estate uh, after moving to Chicago for. For work, I kept seeing where I sit. We see a lot of economic data because the housing sector is really important to the U.S. economy. And what I saw was in a lot of markets like Chicago, the housing prices uh, really hadn't recovered that much from the crisis. Uh, and at the same time, interest rates had gone to record lows. Uh, so I looked at that and I saw there's probably an opportunity there. And uh, lo and behold, when I looked closer, uh, there there really was. Yeah, and I, I will say those of some of you listening are like scratching your head. What do you mean the prices haven't gone up? Well, there are certainly sub markets in this country where they haven't. And AJ, you're blessed to have one of those. But that notwithstanding, the interest rates right now are so fantastic. I mean, I remember when seven percent was was we did backflips if we were able to get a seven percent loan, and you know you're in the four and a half range right now. So that that mitigates some of the pricing irregularity or or high prices that we have because it's all about your ability to service the debt when you buy a property and have and have a, a decent a decent cash flow a debt service co- a decent debt service coverage ratio. So I you are blessed, uh, but let, let that you have one of those areas in your backyard. And those of you listening, don't get discouraged because. When he tells you about where where he bought and why he bought there, I think it might encourage some of you. So let's get into that. This first deal that I, I would also say, yeah. Rod, uh, not all of Chicago was was fairly priced. Uh, I had to look into up and coming areas, uh, mm-hmm. and I think that that's really important for investors to do. Absolutely, you know, I, 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 you guys have heard me talk about areas that are gentrifying. I, absolutely, in my opinion, the best opportunities there are because I've talked about areas in Denver that I, I was able to buy houses for twenty thousand dollars a piece in that are now, I mean, that are now 
oh gosh, three, four hundred thousand. You know, that's what can happen in an area like that, um, particularly when they're really rough. And, and but but the you know the whole eclectic cloud is uh, crowd is moving in, and the coffee shops and all that, and the yoga studios and all that stuff starts coming in. But anyway, so that's what you did. You started looking for an up and coming area. And talk, tell us about your process. What what you know your mindset as you were get, starting to look here. Uh, well, Rod, I I started looking for neighborhoods that I could potentially live in. Uh, I needed to use a, an FHA loan because I, I really, I only started with $10,000 saved. Uh, so really not much. Uh, so I was looking at neighborhoods that were pretty much the hipster neighborhoods of Chicago. Uh, what you said is pretty accurate with the coffee shops and yoga studios. Right. Uh, and those are the places I like to live as well. So it was, it was pretty easy for me to, to move to a place like that. That's how you targeted the, the sub-market that you were interested in. And then uh, tell us about that first deal. Uh, so I looked at a ton of properties and I was even ready to buy uh, a few properties. And my parents tried to talk me out of every single one that I looked at. Uh, why, why was that? And l- uh, well, they were they were kind of in a a little little bit rough condition, mm-hmm. uh, just just because of the neighborhood. Um, yeah, they're they're older houses. They were probably over a hundred years old. Fantastic. Uh, they've been updated, but yeah, fantastic but, uh, opportunity in that in that in those age of properties in an area that's gentrifying, which is exactly the area I was describing uh, in Denver. So yeah, sure. I mean, it's scary when you see a property that's really rough. Uh, it'll turn off most investors and scare them. But I, when I see that, I see incredible opportunity, particularly in an area that's 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 gentrifying or, or up and coming. It was the condition that scared them off. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I'm I'm really glad my parents they talked me out of some deals that I would have been uh, really unhappy <laughs> had I gone through with them today. Really? Um, okay. Why but, is that? Yeah, why why uh, is that? They just needed too much work, or was it the area, or what was it? Uh, just a uh, property where the units were really small bedrooms or oh, yeah. just uh, it would have been a lot harder to rent. Okay, no, public that's, transit. that's, very, no, that, that's yeah. a very important caveat. I'm really gra- glad you brought that up because, you know, certainly you can, you can buy properties that need repair, but you want to be very, very careful about buying properties that have what's called functional obsolescence. And functional obsolescence is a small bedroom, okay? You can't fix that. It's something you can't fix, a wall in the wrong place, you know, uh, having to walk through... Uh, having to having a bathroom off the kitchen instead of um, down a hallway um, that 's that 's called functional obsolescence and those those are the properties you want to avoid so your your parents were were dead on in that well so that 's good so tell us about the place mm-hmm. you found and I, I think those properties they would have cash flowed, but I would not have experienced the same appreciation right and i wouldn 't have had as much fun doing it no so and you would that, have had that's... more turnover people don 't want small bedrooms i mean yeah you 'll get people in there for a while, but then they 'll finally say, "You know what this is no fun. I want to go somewhere else and you 'll have a lot of turnover and turnover kills you in 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 rental real estate so that's that 's the one thing you want to avoid at all costs. Your first property was a triplex, correct correct okay, so tell uh, us so about the first that property deal. it uh it could not have been a better deal it, I got extremely lucky. Uh, once I found it after, uh, being ready, prepared to put an offer down on all these other properties, once I saw this one, I knew it was a great deal. Uh, so I ignored my parents. Okay. And, so there's, there's uh, a and, lesson and there. There's, there's a lesson there right there. Okay, guys, those of you listening, cause he was busy out there looking at deals. He recognized the deal when he saw it. And that's the only way you guys well that are listening, okay? You have to be out there mixing it up, looking at deals. Now, when I get coaching, when I get coaching calls from you guys, I, I always tell you to go on two tracks. You need, to, you need to get my book or a book about multifamily, maybe even take a course or two, and simultaneously be out there looking at deals like AJ was doing here. So very, very important distinction there that, that because you'd been out there looking at deals, you, you were able to recognize one when you saw it. Frankly, if you'd have started this with this one that you ended up getting, you may not have realized that the deal that it was. Do you under, does that make sense? Yeah, so, no, that, you're absolutely right. right. It was only because I had seen so many other deals right. that were good but worse than this that I knew that, that it right. was a... Uh, all right, so, conti- so, so continue. So you found this property. What kind of shape was it in? Uh, so the reason that this property was, was such a, a good deal is because it had been on the market for, for over a year. Uh, the owners had been trying to sell it uh, unsuccessfully. And in the, in the year uh, period that it had been on the market and people had started ignoring the property on, on MLS, uh, the owners had actually made 
uh, updates to one of the units. They they fully renovated one of the units to make it uh, look really nice. And in that time period, also the market had appreciated pretty significantly. Uh, so those combined meant that this property was underpriced uh, compared to anything like it in the neighborhood. Fantastic. Fantastic. So they had started the renovation. Um, so how did you take it down? Talk about the deal, the, the numbers and the financing and all that. Uh, so I uh, I did not have a lot of uh, capital, so I used FHA financing. Fantastic. And so that, that means you had to move in. Mm-hmm, I had to move in and uh, I had to work with the seller to make some minor updates, put in some uh, things that were required by FHA code. Right. Uh, but I ended up paying for those myself because uh, I, I wanted the property. Okay. Okay. So that was part of your and, negoti- that was part of your negotiation. So while you were under contract, when the appraiser came out, they said you got to do this, this, and this, and you agreed to pay for it to keep the deal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. That's that's exactly what happened. Okay. All right. Got it. So what did you end up paying, and uh, what kind of rent are you getting on it? Well, keep, tell tell us the financial side of it. Uh, so this property is a three unit. There's two single units on the lower level. What do you mean by single, single apartments? Home? Like one bedrooms? Uh, one there's two one bedroom apartments okay. on the lower level, and then on the upper level there's a a duplex up. So it's the second and third floors. Uh, it's one giant apartment with okay. uh, five okay. bedrooms and three and a half baths. Wow. Okay. Wow. Uh, so cool. yeah, it was, it's an odd property, and uh, I think one of the reasons that it was so successful is I think young people have a huge advantage uh, in units with an odd oddly large number of bedrooms because if you live there you can rent out those individual bedrooms it's actually pretty easy if if you're living in the property which unit did you move into uh the the large unit so you moved into the large one are you still there or did you move into the next building that you bought i'm still there but i'm uh gearing up to move into the next property i I also used owner occupied okay financing on that one Okay. Don't don't play around with that. Make sure you move in there. They don't play. They don't play when you when you don't. So make sure you do. But so what what do you anticipate? What's your what's your debt on that first one? How much how much is your your PITI principal interest taxes and insurance? Uh, so the it's changed a bit because I re, I was able to refinance after a year and a half uh, and get out of FHA. Okay. Um, oh. But right okay, now good. right now it's uh, let's just say my fixed costs are my mortgage is about. Seventeen fifty mortgage and interest uh, with taxes and with uh, insurance. What other other things that I'd call fixed costs? It's probably twenty three hundred uh, okay. a month for fixed costs, and compare that to the rent. The uh, two single units rent for nine hundred a piece. Wow! And the top unit. This is what I was talking about earlier with the advantage of uh, being young and being able to rent out individual bedrooms to millennials. Uh, that unit should probably get oh, so you're, between fifteen hundred and two thousand. You're personally gonna rent each bedroom versus having somebody rent the whole place and rent the bedrooms out themselves. You're gonna be the one that rents the bedrooms. Yes. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet with the new with moving to the new property. Okay. But uh, just to give people an, ex- an an example of what they can do with, with that kind of property, that that top unit should probably get fifteen hundred to two thousand in in the market, but by renting out individual bedrooms because there's so many uh, I was getting seven hundred per bedroom wow uh, so I was getting twenty eight hundred and I had a bedroom to myself oh, so you were, you were uh, and I was living for free this. you're already doing this wow fantastic that's big money i mean that's that's big cash flow i mean it's more work obviously renting bedrooms it's and there's some other challenges uh personality conflicts things of that nature and using the bathrooms and all that stuff but i mean that's big money good for you so you were you're talking yeah definitely uh, uh, 1800 uh, on the two below and then and then your nuts only 2300 that's that's a pretty significant cash flow with that top unit fantastic well, let's let's move on to the next one. What's tell us about the the second one? It's a fourplex. So the the second one. So I was able to. Uh, so again, to plug buying in a in a, in, a, in the path of appreciation. Uh, the reason I was able to buy a second property is because I refinanced out of FHA and got a home equity line of credit on this property, on the first property. Uh, so with that, I. So, so, so for let, new let, me, let me understand something. So you got new first, you got a new first mortgage, or you just got a home equity line of credit and paid everything off. Did you get? You have two loans on the first one, or one? I have two loans now. Uh, I got out of FHA yeah. because uh, FHA, FHA has 
with with yeah cuz they have the private mortgage insurance which which adds to your payment so that was smart move once you once you got your value up so you refinanced that first FHA mortgage with a with a new conventional loan correct yes okay and then and then you got a home equity line of credit over and above that because you had additional equity am i am i speaking correctly yes okay uh, so Rod, I just you, to make you sure might you might get a that. kick out of uh you might get a kick out of this the uh the HELOC that i was able to get was 95% loan to value Wow, and right now it's the rate is three point nine. Holy cow! Holy cow! That's fantastic! Wow, that's 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 really fantastic money. I mean, that's that's practically free money. But be careful, you know, when you when you've got ninety five percent debt, be very very careful with that. Those of you listening, you don't don't over leverage. Um, you know, you want to be very careful. I've I've gotten that memo more than once, and it's not a fun memo. So uh, trust me on that one. But but that is very cheap money. Holy cow. So t- let's talk about the fourplex. Tell us about that deal. Uh, so this, uh, I got to give give you credit for this. Uh, you encouraged me uh, through your podcast and, and your book to look off market. And with the appreciation that well, it happened you. in thank the past, past year. Uh, uh, so how, how, did oh, yeah. you, how did you find an off market deal? What did you do? Uh, so I started, uh, I started looking at, uh, actually I found this online. Okay. <laughs> which is it's kind of funny. I, I started asking different real estate investors that I knew, not, not that many, uh, where, where I could find off-market deals. And uh, I started looking on, on online forums, uh, like the Bigger Pockets Forum. Oh, wow. And through that, I actually found uh, an, an investor that had taken down a thir- 13 properties from an estate sale uh, and took out a huge hard money loan to get those. And they really needed, they were trying to rehab them quickly and sell them to pay off this loan. And uh, I ended up connecting with this guy uh, through the online messaging thing. And we got, we got a beer in my neighborhood and uh, that's how I found this property. Fantastic. Fantastic. Wow. Great, great tip for, for the listeners here. I mean, what that's, that's one that I even even talked about in my book. I mean, I tell you to go to meetups and I tell you to go to, um, you know, our local RIA meetings, but just going to bigger pockets. I mean, they're a fantastic platform. That well, that's awesome that you you went out, you thought outside the box, and and you went out there and and found it. You found somebody that that had a need. They they found a great deal on an estate sale, and but they needed to carve out this fourplex, and and you you just went and had a beer, and you were able to put a deal together. Awesome, awesome work, AJ. So tell us about the deal. Uh, so so this deal uh, was it's a uh, fourplex. Four units, uh, two are two bedroom and two are one bedroom. Is this units. another older property, like a hundred year old range property? It's another older property, and it's a little bit farther. It's about ten minutes north, so okay. more outside the city than than the property I have. Okay. It's also uh, really close to public transportation. Uh, okay. I I tend to really value that. Uh, that's I don't have a car. Well, especially in Chicago. So I, I mean, yeah, no, I no, use no that. question. No, yeah, that's that's great. And and that and, um, <laughs> excuse me, that's in the path of progress. The 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 direction that you're headed. There are things moving that direction. I hope. Yes. Uh, so yeah, there's a corridor uh, that's all along this the Blue Line transportation corridor of Chicago. Uh, it's in between the city and the airport, and so uh, the appreciation is just moving uh, away from the city towards the airport. That Fantastic. way. So yeah, it's Fantastic. right right in that that avenue and. Uh, it's it's a it's a great property. There's really no ma- there's nothing that needs to be done right away. It's it's fully so you, you you can move right in. What do you anticipate the market rents for that property are, will be, and what's your what's your debt on it? Have you you've already closed, right? Yes. Okay. What's your debt on uh, it? So, so my debt on it is uh, four hundred. And, or sorry, that's the purchase price was uh, four hundred eighty thousand. Okay. And uh, my loan is three hundred seventy-six thousand. Okay. And you were able to put that amount down using your HELOC? Yes. Okay. Wow. Fantastic. So you've got a payment on your HELOC as well. So what what's all of that costing you for this property? The first mortgage and the HELOC payment. Uh, so this this property's fixed costs are close to twenty-five hundred. Okay. And what do you anticipate to get in rents? Uh, about four four thousand. I'm getting right now. Oh, fantastic. It's uh. It's fully. It's actually fully occupied, okay. and it has a three-car garage in the back that that's also renting. And 
So you've got uh, to move somebody out to move in. Then ultimately, you'll be getting $4,000 a month in rent when you find your next place. Fantastic, buddy. That's fantastic. Good for you. The one ca- word of caution I will tell you is that HELOC. You want to try to finance that out as soon as you can. As soon as as soon as soon uh, you've got enough equity in that second property where you can maybe refinance that out, I would do it. Because when the market goes into a contraction, the banks get really skittish and sometimes they'll lock those things up. Tell, tell me the terms of the HELOC. What kind of a time frame does it have on it? Uh, at what point can they, uh, well, I, I assume it's a five-year, is it a five-year where it starts, uh, it, you, have to, you have to pay back principal in five years? Is that one of those? Um, Rod, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not completely sure. You're, okay. you're inspiring me to go look at it again. All right. Well, but please, I think do. It's a please do. Please do. Be very year. careful with that. It's, it's typically a 20-year AM. Mm-hmm. Typically, they'll, they'll reset in five years. In fact, there are a lot of them resetting right now, which is why we anticipate some the foreclosures to kick up again, because when they reset, the, the payments go, go way up. They're a great tool to use to buy the property, but you don't want to leave them on there forever, because it's the first thing that, that the banks will tighten up with, and they'll call them due, and they'll, they'll, just, they'll, they'll just screw with you um, when, when the market tightens up. So you you want to just be careful that you know you don't leave them out there forever. Even though the rates are fantastic, it can just get fog over your eyes. You don't want to let that happen. You ultimately want to you want to cash that out and pay that back because although, like I say, it sounds great when you hear that rate, it's not as it, it's definitely not as secure of debt as just a, a new first mortgage on that second property. So just be let me flag that for you and everybody listening. But wow, mm-hmm. you did it! I mean, you you bought these properties. You've got fantastic cash flow. I mean, uh, I don't know what that all adds up to between the two properties. But uh, you could certainly certainly live for free, if not actually probably supplement a decent chunk of your uh, of your uh, of your job's pay. It's, right? Uh, it's about yeah, that's that's exactly right. I I feel like I am finally on the edge of uh, job replacement income. It's it's about wow. four thousand of cash flow before repairs. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, so. That's fantastic. Now you're going to have more repairs with hundred year old properties for sure. Okay, I mean that's that's just that's just a given. But still, that's that's a huge cushion. So what's next for you, buddy? Uh, actually, I, I think I I really want to start looking at a commercial deal next. Uh, Great. I think I really agree with with everything you said in your book about the uh, the return the gains from having more scale. Uh, right. And I, I really don't want to own that many different properties. I would rather own one big property. Uh, I think that's, that's hallelujah. To hallelujah. For me. It's a shame that I didn't have that mindset 20 years ago. <laughs> I completely agree with you. Well, good for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, how, that... you, how you ever managed 2,000 houses, I have no idea. Well, I only had about <laughs> 900 at, the, at a time uh, at my max, but, but 2,000 over my lifetime. But yeah, no, I had 800 when the market crashed. And that was, uh, as I may have mentioned on this show, my largest seminar ever, but which is why I started the show. Well, that's awesome, buddy. I, I mean, you took action, you made it happen, you've got fantastic cash flow. Now, one thing I want to note, because you said, you know, you talked about how it's almost replaced your income. I do not recommend you quit your job. Do not do that. Even though you could, do not do that. Because that income really helps when you're out there qualifying for deals and, and shows your financial strength, particularly, you know, even when you get into the larger deals, you know, you put a team together maybe and, and start taking down commercial deals. You don't want to, I know you may, the allure of quitting your job and just doing this full time is, is strong, but I wouldn't do it yet. And this is just my advice. And any of you listening that are in similar situations, I would wait because it just it makes you stronger until you really get some momentum and really have a significant uh, assets. I wouldn't recommend quitting your job to do this. I, I always suggest that to everybody I talk to that asks me, and that is pound it out, work both until you really are to a, a point where it absolutely makes sense that you're actually losing money by not doing it. When you're in your first few deals, the banks like to see W-2 income. They just do. It'll, it'll really help you in qualifying for deals, even commercial deals for that matter. I mean, I know the commercial deals, the banks are going to look more at the property, but they still look at the team. And if you've got a stable W-2 source of income, it just gives them comfort. Keep that in mind. What advice, AJ, would you give somebody that is hasn't bought a property yet, that's thinking about it, that has, has not taken action? What what would you tell them? I would tell them now is still a great time uh, because of the interest rates are, are really low. Mm-hmm. And there's usually places in your city where you can buy uh, an affordable property that cash flows. You just have to look in, you want to look in the path of appreciation. Uh, right. That is so key. That's what's going to get you to your second deal. Uh, yeah, cash flow is great, but uh, path of appreciation is is really something you should keep in mind. Love it. I completely agree. 
even here in Sarasota, there there's a, a tough area in town, but there on the fringes of it are opportunity. And if it weren't nothing but houses, I'd be buying in there. I'm just not doing houses anymore. But again, here you've got somebody that that bought a triplex, then bought a fourplex, and has income property. And that's just if you're young and you're listening to this show, go there, guys. Don't go to a single family house. Go to a, go to a plex like this because you can hear the advantages in the in the cash flow and the, on these deals. Well, listen, AJ, I really appreciate you being on the show. I'll be interested to to follow your progress. Please let me know when you take down your next one, buddy. (laughs) Thanks a lot, Rod. All right. I appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing Podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, please subscribe and then take a moment to visit iTunes and leave a five-star rating and review. For more resources to connect with us further, please visit our website at lifetimecashflowpodcast.com. Tune in next week for our next show.